What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. Now, I did not film an intro, and we did a ton of work in the beginning of this episode that doesn't really relate to painting. So we're just going to do a quick little VO, a little voiceover, and explain what's going on. So we're working on the rivet plates. We had to finish off all the rivet plates for the vehicle before we could start prepping everything for paint. So Oscar is making, we already had the driver's side rear quarter panel rivet plate already made. So he took it off. He's mirroring it. Think smarter, not harder. And actually, you should probably just work smarter, not harder. Anyways, he's going to mirror this thing, create another rivet plate while Kyle is creating front fender rivet plates and some other small straight kind of strips that join the two things together. Now that all the hard metal work is done on the rivet plates, it's time to move on to the body filling stage. So every time you have a joint of two pieces of metal, there's a little cracks, there's a little seams and everything like that. We want to fill these seams in with body filler and sand them out smooth. So that's what I'm doing in the headlight buckets here. You can see I'm just kind of filling in the little pinholes and any, you know, kind of maybe dents or dings or anything in there so we can sand them all and then smooth them out. Doing the main join in the over fender part of the rivet plate was extremely hard. We spent almost an entire day working on this. So we put on way too much at first, sanded it down, didn't put on enough, sanded too much off, back and forth, back and forth. So you can see me here, I'm talking about using a little bit of a, a piece of metal. What we did was we took a piece of pipe, cut about two inches out of it and wrapped our sandpaper around that, which made a perfect radius that didn't ever change. And then we used that radius to judge for both sides. So then we just sand with that pipe inside there and it won't let us sand too much or not enough away. And we had a matching radius on both sides for that thing. So after days of sanding, uh, we got all that stuff done.
Oh, wow. Is that Everclear? I guess this is where I'm going to leave you and just party time. No, I'm kidding. We're using the Everclear to clean off the surfaces here. So we had a lot of sap and different uh, contaminants fall onto this thing because we were working on it outside. We found that alcohol is the best way to get that sap off of there, and alcohol is hard to get nowadays, so uh, we use Everclear. Cleaning all the sap off, getting the body uh, cleaned up to prep for sanding before paint. So this is where I'm going to leave you guys. It's now a paint episode. Enjoy. Nice and shiny, totally desapified. Now it's time to move on to prepping the paint and the body kit. So the body kit is just primered and there's some pretty rough spots on the primer. So we're gonna hit this with some 320 and then move up the grits, smooth it all out the best we can. It's gonna be a pretty time consuming process. And then with OEM paint, before you paint over it, you need to scuff it up a little bit, 600 grit or a little bit higher, you know, just to scuff it up so that the new primer when you spray on here will have something to grip into. So we're gonna go ahead and divide up and work on the body kit and the paint. All right guys, we're back for day four and the car is now fully sanded up. So we smoothed out everything on the body kit, which was actually very time consuming, uh, but very much worthwhile because there was a lot of roughness on there and it's nice to have it all nice and smoothed out. And then we scuffed up all of the paint with 600 grit so that our new paint is gonna stick to this. So now we're moving on to the trunk. There's a little bit of work that we gotta do on the trunk. There's a latch mechanism that goes in there. And then there are some uh, space that needs to be cut out right here to get the inner part of the taillights fitted up to the trunk. And then we fit them, we make sure that they're gonna work and that they're gonna go in the right spot and then we take them back out so that they're not a pain for painting. on the trunk just got wrapped up so you can see that the license plate lights are in the lock is in and the lights are in we got the mounting spot for the closing latch to go in there all that stuff is done it's all wired and ready to go so we actually need to go on a supplies run to get things like a million rivets and some other stuff for the trim and things like that but we're also going to go figure out what color kyle wants to paint this car we know he wants a gunmetal ish color um but we got to figure out actually which version because there's about a million different versions of gunmetal so we're going to go on a bit of a road trip and pick kyle's car's color he's stocked we're stocked up we got all our supplies that we need we are now uh, gray car hunting. I saw a few at the Ford dealership. I think that's probably a good place to start. But we're gonna keep our eyes peeled and drive around town. Gray Honda spotted. There's a gray Honda. What's up, Kyle? You don't you don't like the yellow? The one the bananarama color? <laughs> that is the ugliest car ever made. That gray that that gunmetal Jeep color I think is a really good one. Yeah, that's getting that's getting close. Yeah, that's 
Is there a Jeep dealer? Oh, come on, bus. Is there a Jeep bus color? <laughs> is there a Jeep dealership around here? I don't think there is. Yeah. There's another gray Honda. There's a gray Ford. Ah, more Fords that are gray. Might have to buy that Mustang just to figure out really what the color is. Because you know, you don't know what color until you own it. I just want to know the Mustang is all I'm saying. That gray is too light. That's too light. There's the Jeep gray. I'm sure the sales guys at the dealership are not gonna love us. So if you guys are wondering why we're running around, normally we go to the paint store and we do paint chips. They'll have a catalog with a ton of paint chips. You go through them and you go, I think this is the one I want. And you go paint your car. Well, with COVID going on, you can't go into the paint store now. So I have to call them and say, here's the paint code, mix me up X amount of paint for this paint code. So what we gotta do is we gotta find a color that we like the look of, figure out what it's called, then we can look online, figure out the paint code for that color, and then we can order the paint. That is a really good color. What do you think, Kyle? I do like the color. Interesting, like it is a little flat. There's not a lot of flake in it, yeah. but... But as far as the color goes... I know there's another one over here. Let's go check that out. Okay, so this one has a lot more flake in it. A lot more. So it looks a lot brighter in the sun. What do you think? I like this one a lot. It's definitely a whole different color tone. It's a lot lighter in the shade because of the flakes. Yeah. This, Kyle, is the Subaru gray that we actually remember. We saw this on the street a couple days ago and really liked this one. It's got a little bit of flake in it. It's in the middle of the last two that we looked at. Is this the one, Kyle? This is the one. All right, Kyle has decided that he wants the Subaru, what is this? Outback uh, Magnetite, not magnetic, a Magnetite gray metallic. So now we just got to figure out the uh, color code for this. All right, we got our color paint code figured out. The dealership did not sell me on trading in my Raptor for a newer Raptor. That didn't happen, luckily. It would have only costed an extra, what was it, 35, <laughs> $40,000? Double for what I bought this Raptor for, I could have got another Raptor and traded in my Raptor. Um, by the way though, uh, we've now had this Raptor and been using it hard for like a year. So we filmed a review video on kind of like what it's like to have used a salvage Raptor that we fixed up for the last year and how the truck is doing. That's going on the second channel, it'll air tomorrow. So I'll put a link to the second channel in the description. Check it out there. We're gonna keep doing update videos on all of the vehicles and how they're doing uh, after we use them for a while on the second channel. All right, back to the shop, gotta get back to work. We're back, it's time to start riveting. We need to drill out the rivets that have been sanded on and put fresh rivets in every single hole on every single rivet plate on the car. plates are on. This is the first time we've had all the rivet plates fully riveted into the car and it looks really, really cool. I think this theme is really going to work out. Very happy with how it looks with them all on there. So uh, now we got to go ahead and move this thing into the paint booth. Sneak peek on Oscar's car. We changed the front fender like you guys asked. Oscar liked it better that way, right Oscar? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody blames me. They say I make Oscar make decisions. I haven't made Oscar do anything. Oh, by the way, since we're painting in this episode, just talk about the paint on this car. Oscar doesn't want to paint this car. It looks awesome the way it is. I don't think you should paint it either, but Oscar doesn't want to paint it. It's his car, so that's why it's staying the way. It's a patina car. We're going to get rid of all the sap. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. So let's get this baby into the booth. We've cleaned the paint booth, we're in the booth. The next step is we're gonna go ahead and mask off and paint this trim right here. It's a different color than everything else on the car, so we gotta go ahead and bust it out first. Day five, hopefully the last day of this painting journey. The trim black went on great. This is the only thing that's gonna be like a satin black color. So we got that knocked out. Now we gotta go ahead and unmask this stuff up here and start masking off the whole rest of the car for primer. So that's windshield, sunroof, rear glass, take the taillights out, that type of stuff. We're gonna get that all done now so we can go ahead and coat everything with a coat of primer.
All right, it's painting time. We're back, it's day six now. So we spent an entire day prepping and masking this thing for paint. Paint jobs are all about the prep work. If you don't want reactions from the paint, you wanna make sure you don't have any wax or grease on your surface, all that type of stuff. All that hard work goes in and then it's just a few minutes of spraying and then you're done. So all in the prep. So the first coat that we're gonna be spraying down is the primer. So I'm gonna prime up this whole thing, nice level uh, layer of gray primer. And then I'm gonna teach Kyle and Oscar how to spray uh, the base coat phase of this whole thing. They're gonna spray up the base coat and then I'm gonna come in and spray up the clear. For painting today, we're using this thing called a turbine spraying system from Apollo Sprayers. And I'll put a link in the description. We fussed around using a lot of DIY stuff, but we found in the end that for our DIY projects, like the turbine spraying system is awesome. So it actually doesn't really compress the air as much as it just gets the volume, a lot more volume moving really quickly. And what you get is uh, really consistent air pressure and clean, dry air, which is exactly really what you need when you're dealing with air and painting. And then for our paints, we just use PPG paints. If anybody else is wondering, trying to follow along, at home. It's totally possible to do without a turbine spray system. If you want to use an air compressor, you just need to make sure that you have enough air and you need to make sure it's clean and dry. So that's, that's my advice there. And then it's all up to the prep, like I said before. So this car is well prepped. We shouldn't have any problems. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start spraying, uh, spraying all that primer on here. It's going to be a lot. I got the first layer of primer finished out and then we handed over the torch, if you will, to Kyle, who's doing a fantastic job spraying on our second layer of primer now. And we're gonna do two coats of primer. So this is Kyle's first time painting. He's doing a great job. And then uh, after this, we'll be ready to spray base coat. Second coat of primer is on and it looks phenomenal. The guys did a really great job, uh, especially for the first time spraying, no runs, no issues. So now we're gonna go ahead and start spraying our black. So a few parts of this car go black. We have the roof, that all goes black. We have this inset piece right here, that goes black. These vents go black and this front piece right here goes black. So um, we're not gonna mask or tape anything off. We just paint it black, then we mask it off and paint the silver over any of the black overspray. So uh, the roof is the big one. We'll get that thing painted up black. The first stage of black has been sprayed and now we mask off the black that we want to protect so we can paint the silver. painting the silver metallic for about 20 minutes now so I'm gonna jump in there and see how it's going. How's it going? It's going good so far. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah nice light first coat going on. So what are your thoughts on spraying cars? It gets tiring holding this up for a while. What I'm not doing the roof though. That makes things a little easier. Yeah. It's looking good. Good job, man. 
This is going to be so cool when it's done. So one of the big things that I've learned about painting that I was telling Kyle is to go on a little bit lighter on that first coat. You know, you don't want to you don't want to fully paint everything on the first coat. The second and third coats will fill everything in. And Kyle's been doing a great job of doing that. All right, I'll leave you to it. The guy's got the metallic silver base coat on here. You can see how good it looks. This was a really good color choice by Kyle, and it's really exciting now because this thing's really coming together. Now, we have a lot of black accents, so we have the black roof. We need to go ahead and unwrap this. We have the um, black parts right here. We're gonna unwrap those. The black parts there, that needs to get, come off, and then the black parts in there. And then we have to paint all the rivets. So every single one of these rivets goes black. I have a couple small paint brushes. We have to mix up some black base coat that we sprayed earlier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, if any of these, see, I have a feeling some of these might not be perfect. See how that line's not exactly perfect? Come in with that paintbrush. We'll go ahead and clean up that line right there. Make sure that this black vent looks exactly perfect the way we want it to, which is pretty much does, except for that spot right there. We'll touch that up and then make sure all the black accent pieces are black exactly the way we want them. All the rivets are black. And then all we have to do is clear coat this thing. So we're really close. The car looks really awesome already. And I'm really excited to see it finished. So let's get all these black accents all set up. So we've got all the black accents unwrapped and the rivets painted black. You see we painted over 300 different rivets black. It looks phenomenal. It looks really, really good. We're really happy with this color scheme. We really wanted a dark gun metal where the black barely would stick out on it and it looks, looks really, really, really good. So we're really happy about this. Now the last step is the clear. Everything that you see here gets clear coat on it and then the paint job is done. So fingers crossed, if we don't mess up this face, we're golden. We got a great paint job. Finished spraying the clear about 30 minutes ago. Uh, hopefully it's like a little bit dust proof now. So let's peek in here and see how it looks. Very nice. Wow. It came out really good.
shiny. Very shiny, very nice. Good, yeah, it's, it's, it's dust tacked up now. Front end looks so mean with it all painted up like this. What do you think, Kyle? Are you happy about it? Oh yeah. That's awesome, dude. This looks really nice. I'm glad you're happy. The black accents, like this, this piece Kyle decided to go black with, that piece is black, the black accents in the, in the dark charcoal gunmetal color like, are really good. The rivets don't stand out too much, but just enough. What do they look like in that back one? Yeah, that looks good. Oh man, yeah, that looks really good. Cool, we got a good paint job on your car, Kyle. It's a lot of work, huh? Yeah, that is a lot of work. <laughs> and we painted the door jams, guys. You can't complain, we painted the door jams. We never do that, we did that on this one. Finally used the paint booth, got a complete paint job. God, this car looks mean, man. I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, Kyle is gonna start the final installation of everything on his car before we start doing the engine modifications and the tuning to this thing to get it up to around 500 horsepower is our goal. Also, Oscar's gonna be working on his Mustang some more. Uh, we're gonna get that thing across the finish line. Really just trying to get these two cars ready to be roadworthy and ready to roll for our test trials and I'll be working on my single-seater. So you're gonna see all of that coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.